Nonverbal communication. Let's talk about chapter six. There are nine different types of nonverbal communication specified in chapter six, and we're talking about everything except the words, the verbal dimension of communication. And these nonverbal dimensions of communication are so necessary, so important, so essential to our communication. So let's start with number one, kinesics. And this is your body language, not just limited to your body, but also your face and what we can convey through our posture and our facial expressions in, in our message. Number two, haptics. This is touch and the handshake and the hug. And so much is communicated non-verbally through haptics. And I love how your book discusses the differences in haptics across cultures and how important it is to recognize those differences when communicating with people from other backgrounds. And then third, the physical appearance. Now you can't do very much to change your height or your weight but you can change number four, the artifacts, which has to do with your clothing or perhaps the decorations around you. And so today I've got on a nice cozy sweater and I'm sitting beside a candle and I've got my drink. So I'm conveying non-verbally comfort to you and informal a message. When you give your speeches, you want to dress to impress and wear you know, your nicest outfit and really convey formality non-verbally through your artifacts. Number five, proxemics. And this has to do with the physical closeness. And when you stand and talk to someone, how far apart are you standing? And how much physical space are you taking up? I'm sitting in my chair, but I'm not using the armrest. My husband would sit down and use the armrest and, and he would also spread out his body to take up more space. And most men do, that is one distinction in gender. And then number six, environmental factors. And these include temperature, and they include sounds and smells and lighting, and you're not always in control, but as we discussed in our discussion boards on listening, sometimes you are in control. And when you want to convey importance of a message, you eliminate distractions, uh, sound distractions, and other factors that you have within your control non-verbally in your communication to signal that you do want to listen. And so we also have number seven, chronemics, and that has to do with time. We've talked in this class about how time is a gift, especially in listening. And the book discusses how people of greater status and people who assume they're more important than other people tend to waste other people's time in punctuality and being late. And they, the book discusses doctors, it also discusses professors, so I apologize for the rest of us. And not just being late, but also the speed of conversation and how much time you are willing to take up in the conversation has to do with your chronemics. And so I better move on to number eight. Paralanguage is a vocal dimension of nonverbal language, but not the words, but how we say them, our volume, our pitch, our inflection, our, a lot of emotions uh, given around the language, the paralanguage without uh, the actual words. And we're also talking about murmurs or gasping, um, any sounds that we're making with our mouth that do not include the actual words. And then number nine, our silence. And it goes beyond just the dramatic pause. And we're also talking about when you choose to ignore someone with your silence. But silence can also be a positive thing. And maybe you've just eaten the best slice of chocolate cake in the world. And so you want to signify your contentment with your silence. 
And so it's not always a bad thing. Your book ends by discussing the digital nature of nonverbal communication and it shows the evolution of emoticons to stickers to the thumbs up symbol and now we have emojis and I find they are so helpful to use non-verbally in our written communication. So I hope you enjoy this chapter discussing and looking at the different types and categories of our nonverbal communication.